Hello, I'm Sean McGurr, Field CDO at Data IQ, and I'm here at Deloitte's UK headquarters talking to Andy Gold, Global IDA Lead Partner for Deloitte. Thanks for joining us today. Looking well, forward to the you're conversation. Inviting. So, data and AI, very, very hot right now. A lot of attention about a certain flavor of AI that we won't talk about, but it's re raising a whole bunch of questions, uh, the most fundamental of which is how are organizations building a strategy to create value? Yeah, I completely agree, Sean. I think it's one of the hottest topics around, um, certainly with the client organizations that I'm speaking mm -hmm. to at the moment. I think that balance in between how do we understand the data, analytics, the AI challenges that we want to address, mm -hmm. and how do we ensure that it's linked to the, the, the business strategy the business is trying to overcome. I think there's many topics you can, you can walk around. So, you know, talent, where do we mm -hmm. get with talent from? The ecosystem of partners that we need, how do we get clean data, how do we prioritise the use cases to go after with, and it's the fundamental area that most organisations are looking at at the moment, is how do we redefine that AI strategy to support mm. the business strategy. And what's driving that redefinition? Is it, is it the current hype? Um, is it cleaning up stuff that wasn't done before? Is it external business challenges? All of the above? I think it's all the above, mm -hmm. right? I think obviously AI is the hottest mm -hmm. kid in the block at the moment. Mm -hmm. it, it's challenging everything we want to do mm -hmm. and everything we're trying to, to understand about that, that topic and the implications it has on our organization. I think there's a balancing act around all the economic factors mm -hmm. that are going on as well. You know, we're seeing slight downturns in certain, certain mm -hmm. sectors and therefore how do we use data and AI in a different way to help us with mm -hmm. that, those economic pressures. And I also think that the basic challenges are still there, right? Mm. We're still after clean data in clean environments that we can build those use cases on. So it's almost that perfect storm of mm. how do you address those, 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 all those multiple things together. Mm. Are the people that you're working with getting a bit more attention because of the moment than they may have in the past? I think the, the whole, you know, whether we call it the CAO, the CDO agenda, mm -hmm. is becoming more and more prevalent, it's certainly within the organisations right. that I'm working mm -hmm. with. You know, there's certainly a couple that are thinking about how do we promote that agenda more, more succinctly mm -hmm. across the organisation. How do we get board level attention to that, mm -hmm. and even moving that role up into the board level mm -hmm. to really make them sure they've got a clear focus on that. Um, and I think it's that classic dilemma as to where does this role sit, yeah. and how do we make sure that the whole agenda for me is almost like decentralised across the organisation, mm -hmm. right? Because I think it, data and AI is important to everybody, mm -hmm. but it's almost that stewardship of ownership of how do we drive it properly across the organisation is where is you know is is the dilemma that most organisations are, are tackling with. Mm -hmm. So every time I meet a group of uh, chief data officers, you know, I continue to be amazed by the breadth of remits they have, um, how they think about what their job is, where they report into the organisation, as you're saying. We're coming out of a period of centralization, I think. I was part yep. of lots of centralizing movements where you went and gathered data people up from out of the organization, which kind of happens to cut the business domain knowledge a little yep. bit, but made you more capable of other things. What do people need to watch out for as they re-decentralize that you know, talent? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a simple answer. Do we centralize, do we decentralize? I think there's. I think there probably has to be a happy medium somewhere in the, in the middle, right? Uh, a hybrid model, for want of a better phrase. I think I think it's probably important, depending on where you are on your journey, to centralise to make sure you do get the standard mm -hmm. processes in place. But as you alluded to, that that central functional knowledge of the business tend, starts to erode. But then, if you're fully decentralised, then you start to lose the focus on how do we make sure we do industrialisation in the right way, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's a common practice mm -hmm. across the whole organisation. So. I feel there's some sort of hybrid model in, in, in across the two, whereby the center focuses on providing some governance and some innovation that mm -hmm. enables us to think about use cases that, that fit the whole functional domain of the organization. Mm -hmm. And you have that real deep expertise in mm -hmm. whether it's in, into marketing, into finance, into HR, wherever it is that provides that bottom up view of it. And how do you make sure those, those lines work properly with one another? So therefore, it's almost for me, you know, if we're doing this properly, it's almost like the classic analogy seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. You know, if this is really working mm -hmm. properly, then the, the, the insight's just been being generated. You know, the data's clean, it's working properly. Um, it's, you know, you're generating what you need to do as an organization. So I think it's that, you know, if we can get that hybrid model working mm -hmm. properly and the CDOs were working in the right way, mm -hmm. then I think I think that's that's the right mechanism for most organizations. But isn't that the exact fundamental challenge of of maintaining that balance is that when it's working, it's less noticeable. Yeah. When it's not working and people aren't complaining, that's that's when it's working. If you can compare that to other parts of the business that are also focusing on rolling out technology, it's yeah. much more visible. So how can 
the people responsible, whatever their job title, whatever they report yep. to, how can they claim the credit for the things that are working well that aren't on fire? Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's a that's a great question, right? I think the the challenge for most CDO, CDOs is pretty twofold, right? The first part of the job is to get the basics right, mm -hmm. and that's the bit that shouldn't ha is seen and not mm -hmm. heard, right? It's mm -hmm. data is flowing through in the systems properly, mm -hmm. insights being generated mm -hmm. on a regular basis. I think the part where they should get more credibility for mm -hmm. or being seen to enable the value being generated across the organization is it on the innovation front. Mm. So how are we going to push technology to its limits? How are we going to really push the business through the different types of use cases we want to identify? How are we going to use AI in different ways to really create that momentum across the mm. organization? And I think, I think it's probably more seen as being that evangelist mm -hmm. and making sure people are aware of what the possibilities are. But I think that's a classic dilemma for a CDA, right? Brilliant basics, innovation and insight. Mm -hmm. And those two don't quite meet together in certain individuals. Yep. So therefore it's how do you, as within your own your own role and mm -hmm. the teams you create, provide that balance to mm -hmm. the organization. Do you have any advice on how to organize that innovation capacity? Because uh, what we don't want anyone to do is to hire another batch of 20 PhDs, put yep. them in a dark room and check on them in three years and see, yep. what, see what happened. So how can that innovation capacity be uh, enabled and built and demonstrated in a way that the rest of the organization does view it as yeah. cool and attention grabbing but but sees it as valuable for themselves as well yeah i think i think for me that the ones i i feel are doing this in the right way are probably doing a couple of things right one is to your point we're not well, not hiring hundreds of people mm -hmm. leaving the dark room and not see i think there's a small group of individuals that are have a blend of those you know very strong PhD type individuals mm -hmm. and, a, and a group of business people understand mm -hmm. that the economics and blending the two mm -hmm. together. I think also there's a balance there to be struck by utilizing your ecosystem of partners mm -hmm. um, more properly, you know, whether it's, the, whether it's the tech vendors to really understand how their technology can be used in the right way and organizations such as ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that perfect triad of business knowledge and understanding and our own internal capability using the likes of Data IQ and an organisation such as yourself that understand how technology can enable some of that use case bit and our ability within Deloitte of merging those, those three things together to create those use cases, right? And this isn't about the hard sell, this is about the long-term partnership of creating value for that organisation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're not over, always over-investing this area but doing all the right things that creates that value. Because I think many organizations did get burnt once, twice, and we wouldn't want it to be a third, fourth time because of generative AI. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, think, you know, I, think, I think we learned a lot of lessons. You know, we remember the hype, what, five, ten years ago around big data, and yeah. everyone was asking the question, what does big data mean? Mm -hmm. And they you know, go to an organization and say, I want big data, and say, why? Because they've got one. Yep. You know, and it's like, you know, let's it's unpack. It's we'll figure out what to do. Yeah, we'll figure out what yeah. later on that. But this is more a case, this, we have to be more we have to be more pointed in what we want to do. We have to mm. be more driven by the outcome, more driven by the value we want to generate, and that ability to, yes, we know we're going to fail at some mm. points, and that fail fast and, and, and start going again, um, is, is paramount to this. And I think the fundamental challenge for most organisations these days in this whole agenda is that cultural shift in mentality that's required mm -hmm. to really understand the use of data and AI in a different way that really drives that, 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 mm. that outcome we're looking for. And back to the original question right around linking that AI strategy into the business strategy. It's all about cultural shift. Mm -hmm. So who's going to be the vanguard of that cultural shift? You know, for me, culture is sometimes the thing that we blame or give credit to when we yep. can't quite explain why it didn't yep. go right go right or wrong. But there is that you know that is a valid point. When I look at how you're going to change it, you need to take some people who you already have and change the way they're yep. working or recruit some different kinds of people. How does the talent theme kind of fit into that culture change? I think it's massive, right? I think I think this is this is this is a cultural shift on so many different levels. It's it's a cultural shift in recruiting the right types of individuals mm -hmm. into your data and AI team mm -hmm. that understand how you want to do things in a different way. I think it's almost that data literacy to the middle layer of the organization mm -hmm. for them to really understand their role in the mm -hmm. use of data and the generation of insight. Mm -hmm. And I think then it's the at, the, at the senior level, it's how to use that data to make better decisions, right? Mm -hmm. I think gone are the days where we, we, you know, we rely on gut feel to make those important mm -hmm. decisions, but it's a balancing act, right? And again, going back to the whole AI topic, that balance between machines and humans is very important, right? And using the data in the right way to make those better decisions is, is, is paramount. 
I think the cultural shift is in the, the analogy I use is, you know, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Mm -hmm. You know, I can take the business to insight, but I can't make him think. Mm -hmm. and, it's that, <laughs> and it's that cultural shift now of making them think better and using that data in a different way to make the decisions is that, that cultural paradigm we need to overcome. And in terms of taking the horse to the water and holding it there, like what works for the people holding the holding the rope? I, I, a lot depends on the organization, right, and where they are. And, and there's many different techniques you can go after. You know, we, we, we run what we call data safaris with many C-suite organizations mm -hmm. for them to really understand the impact of data and bring them along the data literacy journey. Mm -hmm. So that's one mechanism for that. Even down to, you know, back in the day, we used to run pizza hours, you know, at, at, at client organizations for, to really showcase what we're up to and mm -hmm. to demonstrate, you know, get the, get the, the data scientists that just built this model that's going to create value in this particular mm -hmm. area then showcase that across the business and see the impact that it's having. So, you know, there's many different things to go after. A lot depends on where they are, but I think it's a case of just experimenting with what fits for your organization is mm -hmm. the key. So Andy, decentralizing capability, decentralizing talent, decentralizing data, product delivery yep. is a massive, trendy topic. It's working great for a lot of people. Just returning to what we said about the roles of central functions and how value is measured, what I see happening is that uh, that decentralization leads to a lot of great things. Yep. Um, the, the things that get worked on are going to be basically by definition more relevant to the business domain that we're supposed to be using them. So the taking the horse to water problem should be yep. easier. How do you see credit being dif divided? I'm sorry to keep returning to, yep. to, to credit, who gets the credit, but ultimately credit and profile is what drives budgets and positions to yep. do this thing. So in the limit, in the extreme, fully decentralized kind of success might lead to defunding of central functions, even if they're providing all the stuff that makes those decentralized units work well. Yeah, no, I understand where you're coming from. I think, I, I think for me, there, again, there's several different angles to this. I think fundamentally to this, the central type capability, for want of a better mm -hmm. phrase, is the one that would drive the cross-functional views and the insight piece, right? Mm -hmm. So one part can only be more successful if it links up with another mm. part, right? And I think that's the role of the central capability, whatever size it will be, mm. is to join those dots and provide that organizational end-to-end -end view mm. of what we want to try and deliver and do. Now, the size and scale of that depends on, on the role of the organization. But I think it's going to be very clear up front that you have to define the measurement of success on any use case you're going to go after and have mm. the, the right level of performance frame that's going to help you identify what that's going to look like, right? Mm. So if you go back to a classic marketing campaign, you yeah. know, trying to entice more customers to buy our products, for example, um, you know, we could say from a CDO perspective, we built the we built the model that's going to help impact that by twenty percent, right? Mm -hmm. The marketing department said, well, we've got these one or two campaigns on the go, which is going to have an impact by another twenty percent. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we how do you trade that balance off? And mm -hmm. it's about having an open and honest conversation between the interested parts about how we want to measure success mm -hmm. and how we will share in that success. Yeah. And therefore, you know, if we agree a 50-50 share on that uplift mm -hmm. between the, the the data team and the, and the marketing team, that's what we agreed in principle. Mm -hmm. And then it's making sure we have those open and honest conversations to define that framework and define the measurements for success within that mm -hmm. and that's the key driver to start with i think the second part then is around and we talked to many organizations around this it's almost like again apologies for the analogies but we call it the penguin the penguin swap mm -hmm. so we have a you know a penguin deal where we swap people around the organization so they get to understand and mm -hmm. learn more as they get as they go through so that rotation around having someone that sits in marketing spending a, a few weeks in finance mm -hmm. or someone in finance spending a few months in the central team so they get an appreciation of what's out there, mm -hmm. that does several things, right? It builds up their own internal knowledge and capability. It probably helps retain them more within mm -hmm. the organization because they're learning more as they go along. Yeah. And three, that knowledge they've got from other parts of the organization can only come back into their, their home organization and help them think about things slightly differently. Mm -hmm. How, when I merge stuff together, what's the impact of that going to be on those use cases of the value we're going after? So I think they're the couple of angles you can look at mm. it from and help solve that, that, that classic debate between centralized and decentralized. So giving people a common language to even talk about the benefits Absolutely. of the data. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. yeah. And yeah. not making it a us versus them, we did a thing, yeah. they used yeah. it. Yeah. And is, are some of those rotation things becoming kind of formalized as programs? Yeah, I think certainly with, internally within organizations, they are starting to, certainly the ones that we've been um, speaking with, they're starting to take that to the next level and put it as part of their talent agenda. Think about right. a performance framework that supports that, that round. 
Um, and we've even thought about doing something similar with uh, with organisations as well, where we mm. would take some of their people and into our organisation for a period of time, and vice versa, as a way right. of trying to trying to help them improve their capability and help us in, increase knowledge of them. So yeah. early days, but hopefully there might be something that we can do more formally. I think everyone will win if the average tenure of a data scientist increases beyond whatever it is Where for it is now, 18, now, 18 months if and we're lucky these days, build right? one thing and run away. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. In terms of where that future talent comes from, you know, you mentioned talent programs. Yeah. Do you see um, the need for digital skills and data skills within that rising to the level of significance it should be within kind of the people agenda in a company? I definitely think so. I, I think it comes back around to what we touched on earlier on, right? There's that 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 home set of you know, your core team, mm -hmm. having sure you've got the right set of technical skills and digital skills that sit within that. But there needs to be a level of data, digital, analytical type skills within the business itself. So they've all become data literate or digitally, digitally literate mm -hmm. in what they're looking to deliver out mm -hmm. to the organisation. So I think it's how do you deliver that out into the into the organisation. I think I think what it does mean though is that organisations probably have to think slightly differently on how mm. they acquire talent into the organisation. Yeah. And to your early point, right, if it's 18 months at the moment for the average tenure of a data scientist, what we put in place to increase that to two years or to 36 mm -hmm. months, you know, mm -hmm. and, and keep growing that, that, that certain thing. So I think it's, you know, and some of these things already started, right, so how do organisations work better with academia to support mm. some, some, some people through that process? Or how do organisations work with one another to share talent across organisations? So mm. organisations from different sectors, you know, we've worked with a couple of organisations from different sectors, introduced them, mm. got the teams working together. And again, similar to the, the rotation of talent, how can we get them mm. to share people across their own organisations at the same time to get different experiences, which will hopefully um, increase the longevity of their tenure with that, with mm. that home organisation. And it's been great catching up and uh, learning some of these lessons from your discussions with clients. Any last words of advice? Oh, um, I think I think embrace embrace the change, mm -hmm. embrace the cultural challenges that you overcome, and just use data to create the insight and the value you're after. Mm -hmm. Brilliant! Thanks for joining us here today. Thank you.